Hey guys, this video is a little bit different today. Today I wanna to talk to you about what I think are the seven top things you need to learn on your journey of learning native script development. Normally we do tips, tricks, and tutorials here. This is a new series I'm starting out for folks that are not only interested in the technical how to do something in native script, but also we're gonna take a look at other skills. We're gonna start out with things you need to know to start learning native script. We're gonna look at things that have to do with jobs, how you're gonna apply your native script skills and practical things like that. Salaries, for example, mobile development salaries. We'll take a look at all these things in future segments. All right, seven things is what we're looking at today. Let's roll the intro. So today we're looking at seven things that you need to know in order to get started learning native script. This is definitely not a complete list. These are just the top seven things that I happen to think about. But if you have other suggestions, leave a comment down below. I know there's lots of different people watching this channel from beginners to advanced. So if you are advanced and you've been working with NativeScript for a while, I'm sure some beginners would benefit from you commenting down below. And if you're new here, you have never subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, you'll help me out a lot and click the little bell so you don't miss any of these videos that are coming out. We have NativeScript tips, tricks and tutorials. And now we also have segments like this one. All right, so let's get right to it. The first thing you're gonna need to know is JavaScript. That's not a big surprise, right? You need to know JavaScript, and I would even suggest that you learn TypeScript as well. Now you can use NativeScript Core with just JavaScript, and same thing goes for NativeScript View. You can use that with plain old JavaScript, but more and more companies out there are investing into TypeScript because TypeScript is helpful when it comes to teams and working with teams. The tooling around TypeScript is superb. The tooling around JavaScript is getting better and better, but TypeScript comes with this built-in rigorous structure that really helps you stay in the lane, especially if you're a junior developer coming into a company where they're using TypeScript. You're really gonna know where you need to be you're gonna spend a lot less time trying to figure things out and you're gonna be immediately effective in your job. NativeScript with Angular uses TypeScript by default, of course, because Angular uses TypeScript by default. You cannot escape it. You cannot build a NativeScript application with Angular using just plain old JavaScript. NativeScript Core, you can use with TypeScript as well. And uh, usually that's what I use. Most of my examples here use that. However, the getting started with NativeScript course, that's free, that's on nativescripting.com, that uses plain JavaScript for now. I am thinking about switching that over in the next update to using TypeScript. And NativeScript View, you have your choice. With NativeScript View, you can use plain old JavaScript. A lot of examples in NativeScript View and View itself, Vue.js, have JavaScript, just JavaScript. So you'll see a lot of examples on Stack Overflow using plain old JavaScript. I recommend using NativeScript View with TypeScript. And I have a few videos on this channel showing you exactly how to get set up, how to use TypeScript class components and so on. Now, if you're using NativeScript CLI to start a brand new NativeScript View project, the option is not quite there yet to uh, include TypeScript in your NativeScript View applications. But there is a way to use TypeScript with NativeScript and Vue using the Vue CLI. And the Vue CLI supports TypeScript. I'll link to that video where I show you how to do that down below. So check that out. All right, thing number two that you need to know to get started with NativeScript is UI layouts. And I'm not talking about NativeScript specific layouts. I'm talking about just coming from the web world, the way UI is laid out. So you have your boxes, your box model. In the web, you have rectangles. Basically, you're dealing with rectangles that contain other rectangles and other things like images, text, and so on. You need to take that knowledge and bring it over from the web to native script. You also need to know how to layer things. In the web, not only do you have rectangles living next to each other, but you can have rectangles on top of each other this way in a 3D space, right? So you're dealing with X and Y coordinates, but sometimes you're also dealing with Z index. And that comes into play with NativeScript as well, because not only are you rendering rectangles to contain other rectangles and to contain other elements, we call all these views, by the way, in NativeScript. They are all called views because they inherit from the root view class. And then you can also layer views on top of one another in this axis, three-dimensionally, right? So towards you. 
That way one element is blocking another element behind it. You need to understand that kind of 3D space and be able to feel that as you're developing your UIs. So if a designer brings over a design to you, you wanna be able to disassemble that in your mind and apply different UI widgets that you're gonna be using in NativeScript to simulate that design in your application. All right, thing number three is UX, which is user experience. Now, this is not the same thing as the previous thing, which is UI layouts. UX is user experience, and this has to do more with the way the platforms are presented to the user. So in iOS, for example, a user is used to a certain way that iOS behaves. Now, while NativeScript will allow you to write just one code base and be able to create iOS and Android applications with that one code base, you also have the option to separate out and create platform specific things. So for example, you can have a view, which is a UI element present differently on iOS and on Android. I have several videos in this channel on how to do platform specific things like classes, modules in JavaScript, as well as CSS and functions even. So check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Now, of course, it's up to the developer or if you have a UX expert in your company, to be able to define what it means to use a certain widget or a certain interaction in your application, whether it's on iOS and Android, you're gonna be able to define whether you want it to be exactly the same on iOS and Android, or do you want them to look differently? For example, on Android, material design has been pretty popular for the last few years. It's been pretty much the default. And on iOS, that's not the case, but you can bring material design to iOS. You don't have to though. So you can have your platform differences in that case where the user is gonna experience Android a little bit differently than iOS. You can plan for that and that's part of your UX. So keep that in mind for number three. Number four is software design patterns. This is a very important thing, right? You're not gonna just start coding and hope things will turn out for the best. You wanna have a picture in your mind of how the different components interact with each other. So this is a little bit different for NativeScript View, NativeScript Angular, and NativeScript Core. In NativeScript Core, the default is to use MVVM, which is Model View View Model. That's a design pattern software that lets you separate out the different concerns. You have the model, the view is just a simple view that doesn't really do anything. And then the view model lives behind the view and kind of passes information between the model and the view. Then in Angular, you're working with MVC, which is model view controller. It's a different pattern altogether. And you also have MVC in view as well. These patterns are very important because of the way the data flows. So you have the data coming in from the back end, for example, going through your model and your view models, and then the controller, and then ending up in your view. And the data is also gonna be flowing the other way from the user. The user is gonna be interacting with the view itself and pushing that data through events, using taps or keyboard inputs, whatever their text they're typing in. That data has to flow back through the controller, through the view model, back to the model or the brain of your application and gets processed there. That flow of data is very important. You should know that and be familiar with it, at least read up on it. Now with Angular and Vue, this is kind of built in and you don't really have to worry about it because of the way you're building your application. But with NativeScript Core, it's kind of open on how you implement this. And there's lots of different opinions about it because NativeScript Core doesn't have a UI framework living on top of it like Angular or Vue is just the basic native script core. So you have the option of how you wanna present or how you wanna structure your application on top of that. And I go into a lot of detail about this in the native script core pro course, specifically the architecture chapter on how to best organize your project structure so that it's separated and the concerns are separated. All right, number five is core modules. Core modules, what are these? Well, NativeScript comes with a lot of modules already built in. So when you create a new NativeScript project, all those modules that are part of NativeScript itself get bundled together with your application. For example, uh, stack layout is a layout that lives in layouts module inside the TNS core modules. That's actually what they're called. The package name is TNS core modules. Core modules includes more than just UI elements like buttons and labels and so on. Core modules includes other things like connectivity, timing, application settings, data functionalities, like how to work with observables and observable arrays. 
Basically, core modules is something that's gonna take you a little bit of time to learn. Out of all these things on this list, this is the core of native script, right? So this is what you're gonna be working with day to day as you're building your native script applications. Well, you say, Alex, how am I gonna learn this stuff? This is the stuff that I need to learn in order to learn native script. Well, the answer is one thing at a time. I'd say start out with just playing around with UI modules. The native script playground is a good place for you to get started just to play around with some of those widgets where you can just drag and drop things and see them live on your phone or on your device, whatever you're using. And you can change the properties right there in the playground and have it update in real time on your device, which is really cool. It's a good way to start out learning. Once you're done with that though, you should really get the CLI installed and have a local development process with the software emulators running on your device. If you're on a Mac, you can have the Android emulator and the iOS simulator. If you're on Windows or Linux, you're gonna have the Android emulator. Now to get you started with learning the UI aspect, I have the NativeScript hands-on UI course on nativescripting.com. So check that out if you like learning with video. All right, number six is learning partners. You could sit in the basement and try to study all this yourself and that'll work, but it might just take a little bit longer. When you have a learning partner, then you have some sort of accountability and you have another person to ask questions to. You can work on projects together, you can take courses together, and then you won't be alone if you're stuck on something. You can always ask your friend. You'll be able to check each other's work and maybe you'll even decide to build something together as a real project that you can later put out into the app stores. So having a partner is highly recommended. Well, that brings me to the last point, point number seven, which is how you're gonna learn together. You need some kind of learning path. You can attend workshops, you can attend live trainings, but also you can do things at home by subscribing to some kind of organized video course. And of course, nativescripting.com has not only individual video courses, but we've recently released learning tracks that show you where you can start, some intermediate level courses, and then what you finish up with is the pro level courses. So you can skip around depending on your experience with NativeScript already. There's tracks for each NativeScript Core, NativeScript Angular, and NativeScript View. So if you're already familiar with NativeScript, you can skip right to the NativeScript Core Pro course, get the pro course separately. Or if you're just starting out, or if you have a team that's starting out and you want the team to be subscribed to the entire sequence of courses, then you can check out one of the tracks for your framework of choice. And here we are, I'm on YouTube. YouTube is great if you're Googling around for a solution and the YouTube video comes up with the answer for you. And that's great. But if you want a structured approach to learning, if you want somebody to take you from point A to point Z, yeah, not A to B. I guess the whole thing, A to Z we'll call it. Then you are gonna want to have some sort of organized course that's gonna take you on building a project and it's gonna show you how to do it from start to finish. But don't stop watching YouTube videos. Definitely keep watching those because the more information you suck up about NativeScript, the more you're gonna know in the end. And that might help you out even fill in some of the gaps that you're missing if you are going through a book or a course. Hey, that's seven things right there. You know, I have a lot of fun creating these videos for you. And while it does take a significant amount of time to do that, I really wanna keep doing that. But I need your help. I need you to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed so that I can see that people are actually interested in this. And if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave those down below. And I will see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.